and officials were overwhelmed. And then it became a problem as to how do you manage so many uh, dead bodies because you see there is a legal process. Any unnatural death has to be dealt with in a particular way. Not only that, to add to that was the problem of disposal of the bodies. Human bodies plus animals. So that was another major crisis which we went, underwent in, after two days. Official figures say around 3,000 people died in the immediate aftermath of the leak. Bhopal residents believe the real total was much higher. They said at least 7,000 shrouds were needed to cover the dead. But the devastation did not end with the dead of the first few hours. In fact, the real horror of that night was only just beginning. It happened in Bhopal when it was released in 2007, about 6-7 years ago. Yes, it was about 6-7 years ago. สายนั้นร้อยห้าสิบหกนะครับก็อยู่ๆโรงงานผลิตโพลีเอสเตอร์เหมือนกันก็เกิดปรากฏการไฟลุกขึ้นดับไปอุตลุดเลยนะได้เ
อาสารตั้งต้นคือพวกเป็นฟอสจีนส์ครับผสมกับเมทิลามีนนะฮะเกิดเป็นสารอินเตอร์เมเดียที่เรียกว่าสารเมทิลไอโซไซเนตซึ่งเป็นสารพิษสารตัวนี้แหละครับที่เป็นสาเหตุที่ทําให้เกิดคนคนเสียชีวิตไปถึงตัวเมทิลไอโซไซเนตใช่ครับเป็นเป็นสารอินเตอร์เมเดียตัวนี้ครับถ้าถ้าถ้านักศึกษาไม่รู้จักฟังแค่ว่าไอซยานายไซยานายก็คือก็ยุรุอยู่แล้วใช่ไหมครับมันจะเกิดอาการชาแล้วทองทั่วไปใช่ไหมครับก็ต้องอะไรนะเวลาแม่ใช่ครับจินไซยานายคือใส่เข็มแล้วก็เสียบเบาๆไซยานายให้ลูกสะพ้ายกินนางร้ายมากครับตัวนั้นจัดอินละครจัดไปแล้วก็ครับผมไม่เห็นนักศาจะได้จําได้ครับผมตัวนี้ก็จริงๆแล้วจริงๆแล้วไอ้ไอ้ตัวเนี้ยสามารถไปผลิตเป็นได้เยอะแยะเลยได้ครับก็คือนอกจากนี้ก็คือเป็นสารที่ว่าสายเป็นตัวแอดแอดดิทีฟแอดดิทีฟสำหรับพวกอุตสาหกรรมยางนะครับตัวนี้นั้นใครไปทำอุตสาหกรรมยางก็อาจจะมีมีฮะสายกลุ่มนี้อยู่แล้วก็ที่สําคัญตัวเมทิลไอโซไซเนตเนี่ยมันละลายน้ําได้ดีนี่คือประเด็นนี่คือประเด็นของหลักก็คือหลังจากละลายน้ําปั๊บมันจะคลายความร้อนออกมาอะครับเราไปดูคลิปต่อไปใช่ครับใช่ไหมครับเราดูคลิปต่อไปนะครับ In contrast with phosgene, MIC was stored in three vast tanks, originally buried in a concrete bunker near the edge of the plant. 40 feet long and 8 feet in diameter, each was capable of holding 42 tons of the potentially lethal chemical. Where phosgene was a famous killer kept in small quantities, MIC was stored on a scale that would kill thousands. Eight forty-five. The pipes that were being washed started to become choked with the dirt being carried by the water. The nozzles became blocked and water began to back up. Flowing into one of the main pipe systems that ran throughout the plant. MIC is very handy stuff. It reacts to produce particular molecules that uh, we probably couldn't reach easily by other chemistry. So it's very useful to the chemist. He can build things in a way that he wouldn't otherwise be able to do. It's also reactive, which means that things that happen happen fast. We uh, we don't need very long reaction times. And we tend to get perhaps cleaner chemistry, fewer waste products. However, the reactivity is a problem. Uh, it means that it's going to react with a whole range of things it might come into contact with, uh, water, for example, or worse still, people. Keeping MIC apart from water is vital, because if the two liquids mix, anybody nearby would be in serious danger. MIC is a highly irritant gas. It has. Two important physical properties that make it particularly unpleasant. The first is that it's very soluble in water, uh, and the second is that it, it, it vaporizes or, or boils at a temperature almost exactly the same as, uh, as, as the body. This means that if you inhale MIC at low concentrations, it's going to affect, in the first place, those parts of your body that are wet, which will absorb the M MIC. That's your eyes, your mouth, your throat, and your upper airways. At high enough concentrations, it'll get the whole way down to that part of your lung where oxygen is transferred into your bloodstream. And very similar to the uh, effects of phosgene, if that part of your lung is damaged, then serum will flood from your bloodstream into your lungs, and you'll die from a sort of internal drowning. With water flooding the pipes, time was running out. The tank should have been protected from contamination. But a catalogue of failures was about to have the most terrible consequences for the people of Bhopal. The tragedy at Bhopal happened when some 35 tons of a lethal chemical called methyl isocyanate reacted with water and vaporized. Thousands of people in the shanty town that surrounds the plant were gassed, dying. In the same horrific way that soldiers were killed in the First World War, the disaster was due to an amazing combination of circumstances. Had each happened on their own, the accident would never have occurred. In terms of designing chemical plants, there are really two sorts of safety. One is designing the plant to be safe in the first place, and the second is operating it safely. And at Bhopal, there were problems in both areas. 
three hours to go until the catastrophic release. The first of many hundreds of litres of water found their way from a routine cleaning operation into the main pipe system that ran throughout the factory. It should have been impossible for the water to get very far, but mistake number one had already been made. A safety procedure existed to isolate sections of pipeline before they were cleaned. A simple piece of metal called a slip blind is inserted and the bolts done up tight achieving an impenetrable seal. Incredibly, this procedure was often ignored at Bhopal. To install a slip blind like this would probably take about two hours and you would have had to wear a lot of protective clothing because when you undid the bolts of these flanges, the possibility of chemicals splashing onto you would be there. If one of these small pieces of steel had been inserted into the process pipeline, in all probability this disaster would not have happened. By 9.30, the water was able to travel freely through the hundreds of meters of pipe that separated the main plant from the MIC storage area and its deadly content. The disaster could still have been averted, however, had the gauges in the factory's control room been trustworthy. When this plant was designed and installed, the instrumentation here was probably state-of-the-art as far as India goes. Over the years, lack of maintenance contributed to the instruments giving faulty readings from time to time, which probably led to the operators and to the staff not taking the readings very seriously. MIC is kept under pressure with inert gas to stop anything from getting into the tank. But for six weeks, the pressure gauge had read virtually zero. It was presumed that the gauge was faulty. In fact, there was a leaky valve connecting the tank to the plant's main pipe system. If gas could get out, then water could get in. By approximately 10 o'clock, the contamination had started. The reaction of MIC in water generates carbon dioxide as one of its products. It also generates heat. Of course, the heat starts to warm the mixture. It's an exothermic reaction, as we call it. What I'm going to do is a similar reaction that obviously uses much safer chemicals. This material is going to behave rather like the MIC did. The material I'm adding is in effect the water that, was, uh, that came into the vessel. We add that and as you can see gas bubbles start to form. Water is denser than MIC, so it falls to the bottom of the vessel. The first part of the reaction takes place where the two layers of liquid meet. So this looks exactly like the MIC water interface would. We're generating bubbles at the boundary between the two liquid layers. But the key issue is the heat. This heat heats up the reaction mixture. The temperature rises. And when the temperature rises, the reaction speeds up and in turn generates heat even faster. It's what we call a runaway. Even with water in the tank, it should have been possible to control the situation. MIC has to be kept cool, and the tanks were housed in a concrete bunker, insulating them from the fierce heat of central India. There was also a cooling system controlled from a purpose-built refrigeration plant. The senior management, however, had decided to switch it off. This wasn't running on the night of the tragedy. In fact, it had been off since May 84. The coolant inside had been removed and it was permanently disabled. Switching the refrigeration off was an insane thing to do. These reactions, these exothermic runaway reactions, uh, take place when we're generating more heat than we can remove. The refrigeration system was there to remove heat. Switching it off made this incident much, much more likely. 
Incredibly, another safety device had been bypassed in defiance of Union Carbide's own operating instructions. You can see now the reaction is getting quite enthusiastic, getting some bubbles, some droplets of liquid coming out of the top of the vessel. And if this were an industrial scale vessel, we would have a significant emergency on our hands. At Bhopal, there was a machine purpose-built to deal with toxic gases, a device known as a vent gas scrubber. ครับก็คือเมื่อเมททิไอโซไซเนททำบิยากับน้ำครับมันจะได้ผลิตภัณฑ์เป็นคาร์บอนไดออกไซด์นะครับแล้วก็พวกตระกูลยูเรียต่
ทั้งทั้งบุคคลใช้ข้อมแล้วก็สิ่งแวดล้อมบริเวณนั้นด้วยครับเดี๋ยวเรามาดูคลิปที่3นะครับ At Bhopal, there was a machine purpose-built to deal with toxic gases, a device known as a vent gas scrubber. This is the vent gas scrubber we had at Bhopal. It works by neutralizing toxic gas before releasing it into the atmosphere. And on the night, though, it was switched off for maintenance. Even if this vital piece of equipment had been on, it was too small to cope with the quantity of MIC that was now out of control. This is really bubbling violently now. As you can see lots of gas being generated, and of course at Bhopal. The whole thing was happening on a scale a hundred thousand times bigger. There's absolutely nothing that can be done to slow this down. Heat is being generated so fast that, on an industrial scale, we cannot remove it quickly enough to stop the reaction. This is the uh, the worst nightmare for a chemical plant operator. This is a disaster. V. N. Singh was working at the plant that night, and it was his duty to check the area where the pipe washing had started some four hours earlier. By this time, midnight, water was flowing once again from the drainage nozzles, but he noticed that something was wrong. The disaster was just minutes away. When I got here, I saw water running out of the bleeders, but my eyes started to hurt. This was quite common at the factory, but that day it was very, very bad. So I ran to the control room. What V. N. Singh saw when he got to the control room about a minute later was the final stage of a chemical process that had been underway for over two hours. At a molecular level, things are happening extremely fast. As the system warms up, a second reaction kicks in: trimerization, a reaction between three methyl isocyanate molecules that forms a stable molecule and generates more heat. As each bond is made, energy is released. Now the MIC molecules were able to react with themselves. All 42 tons of the material were free to generate heat almost simultaneously. The reaction is getting very violent at the moment. Material is starting to leave the top. Lots of gas being generated. Bubbles of liquid leaving. Right now, with the the equipment they had at Bhopal, there was absolutely nothing that could be done to save the people. So I came running out to tank E610, and even though it was underground, you could hear a terrible rumbling noise, and the concrete started to shake and crack. The tank was now in serious danger of bursting, but it held. Instead, a pressure relief valve blew, and the gas was on its deadly way. It travelled to the main plant structure, through the useless vent gas scrubber, and then out. The gas was carried away by a southeasterly wind, clear of the plant, but directly over the sleeping city of Bhopal. I started working for Carbide in 1971. It was one of the proudest moments of my life because I was selected to work for Union Carbide. But after that disaster, I'm ashamed now that I was ever associated with a company which did not manage to live up to its name and reputation in India. <laughs>